This is Ashley Mary Nunes. This is Todd Nunes, and you are listening listening to the the Break It Down Down Show. And now, the Break It Down Show with John and Pete. We are in our production home in Los Angeles. That's right. Uh, Which is Hill Dog Productions, where they record the Screenwriters Rant Room, the Hilliard Guest Screenwriters Rant Room. If you don't already listen to it, subscribe to it right now. With us this week, we have Todd and Ashley. Yes. Who are, we're lucky enough to say our friends. but yes. Family, friends. good friends. Aww. They're also yeah. with us to talk about their next project coming up, all the awards they've won with their previous project, mm-hmm. which is called All Through the House. Yeah. And here's what I love about All Through the House before we really get started is that oh, good. you've figured out a way to get yourself a check every year. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. that with a seasonal That's movie, your kind of math. It's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> That's, right. That's how I've one of my selling points when I was trying yeah. to, to get the money for it. Yeah. yeah. It's great to have that as a concept. Mm-hmm. But when you actually produce the picture mm. and it's good and it starts winning awards and it makes its way through the festival circuit and it starts getting a crowd response, well done. Thank you. Yeah, nice thank job. you. It's been a great. It's been a great. Well, you are part of the process, Ashley. Oh, thank you. I had a conversation with Sandra Ponce de Leon. Oh, Sandra. Yeah, yes. we, we do another show called Popping the Bubble. It's more tech and business based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said, "Who's the most famous person from Benicia?" And I'm like, "Well, that's tough. Depends on how you look at it." Because you had Reynard Rutherford played for the Niners. Yeah. And you have Willie Calhoun, who's an up and coming prospect for the Dodgers. You have Teresa Rodriguez, who's a world renowned travel author. Yes. Mm-hmm. All kinds of people doing incredible things. But Todd and Ashley make movies that win awards. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that's that's some b- pretty big uh, competition. For it is a big competition, you know, and I'm leaving out a lot of people that have done a lot of other things. But you guys are absolutely on the top of that thing. So, well, thank you. Oh, well, thank you. well done. Yes, yeah. I love the movie poster that's got all the badges around it. Yes, you know, yeah, anytime I yeah, see that, I go, "Oh, look, this thing is happening!" And all through the house was happening. We've had a great run. We were really excited about the people we came across, the response that we got, that people actually got it. And so we just, we can't wait for October 4th. And yeah. it's crazy that this, around this time last year was when we just had our world premiere right. of All Through the House. Yes. And we've been waiting for this moment now for a whole year. And I can't believe it's already here. Yeah. We're like, wow, this is so, so far fast. away. So fast. And yeah. then now it, it happens so fast. Tell us what happens on October 4th. On October 4th, uh, All Through the House is released on Blu-ray, DVD, and all major VOD platforms, including iTunes. It's going to be a big day for us. And yes. We're really excited. It's going to be a big blowout, and uh, uh, we've been on consistently on the top 100 horror Blu-ray selling on Amazon since uh, the pre-orders began. So it's been really exciting. Wow. That is and fantastic. it's not even technically your... You know, Christmas season. Not yet, no, no. So, so we got I a lot of. I think all the seasons kind of roll together. So when you have a Christmas thing coming out, you know, you start all the like Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas, New Year's. To me, that those are all one. Yeah. So I think it hits it enough months. And I think that Christmas is becoming the new Halloween, and I mm-hmm. think I absolutely love that. So I can go out trick or treat. Well, one can Halloween. say yeah, Christmas. Yes. that Christmas is becoming <laughs> the new Halloween, but not everyone can say. I'm helping steer Christmas toward being the new Halloween. I'm doing it vigorously. Yeah. <laughs> because, look, it only becomes that if culture dictates yeah. that you know, that's how we perceive it. And when we have cultural landmarks like the movies we like to watch and that they steer us toward, ooh, it's Christmas time. Yeah, and we, we are lucky enough to be on sort of the forefront of the Christmas horror movie right. genre, even though there have been plenty of Christmas sure. horror movies. But there's a huge wave that's going to be coming out soon. So that's going to be following us, and you know I've been tracking them all, and I know I know and I know what you guys are doing, and the keyword <laughs> is following. Yeah, <laughs> yes, following. We had Zach Ward on the show uh, a couple months back, and he is Scott Farkas in Christmas Story. Oh, so now okay, I get yeah, to yeah, have yeah. I get to do your guys' movie and his movie, and be like these are people that I know and care about. And it's just going to make Christmas that much more fun and family like. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, our movie that's is awesome. really family like. Just so you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> family like. I get to watch you guys. I get to watch Ashley run around and scream and everything. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, you do get that. Yeah. And you were on the screenwriters' rant room too, Todd. I sure was. I had a great time. That's fun, huh? Yeah, it was a it was a blast, and I got to make, meet a uh, really talented uh, Hillard. Well, you know, Uncle Hill, yeah. who also just celebrated a birthday. I think he's 27. 27 I years old. I thought he was 23. Old. Yeah. Just Not 23? Yeah. He's 20, I thought 23. 20, oh, it could uh, be. Yeah. I got to check my card. Something yeah. like that. 
Anyway, uh, you know, when you have the ability to not only win awards, but when everybody says, hey, you know what? We have to really understand what Todd's doing because he's done something unique and he's done something that is now groundbreaking and there are several people following. So, man, it's just like the things are falling into place for you. What are you guys doing now? Well, right now, like we are getting ready for our release. Yeah. And also, we are in the midst of pre production on my next movie, which I'm real excited about Death Ward 13, which is the remake to the cult classic movie Don't Look in the Basement. Death Ward 13. <laughs> yes. What can you tell us about it? Well, I can tell you that it is a remake. It's also a, a reimagining. We do a lot of things differently. Like, I don't want to do the same movie again, sure. but I want to take the concept of that movie. Okay. And uh, put a spin on it. One of the most famous things about that movie was that it had this amazing twist in it. But uh, since that movie's come out, that twist has been done a gabillion times. People are very, very familiar with it. And I think that's one of the reasons why the movie's never been remade is uh, how do you do that? You just sit around and wait for this twist you know is going to happen to happen? Yeah. So I think once I found that out, I found out what I needed to do with it. That's when uh, I thought, yeah, we can do this. And, uh, And we ran with it. Here's Todd creating suspense. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> right even, now. Yeah. E- even in pre-production, when you're talking about it, you're creating suspense. What, what's your pre-production process all about? Tell us like the well, day-to-day stuff pro- that you're into Well, right for now. most people, the pre-production process is a bit, maybe a bit boring. It's not the most exciting part. But um, it's, it's a lot of getting your, all your ducks lined up, making sure that your money is going to the right places, that you're getting the right places and you're getting the right actors, which is the last thing that we're, we're going to do because that's still a process. But we want to make sure we have our special effects, mm-hmm. our makeup, everything that we consider that's going to be really important to this movie. Which is everything. Which is everything. But I, I always think that it, it stuff does go on a, this is really important. Yeah. You know, when you get down to moments where time is an issue or there's so, anything can happen, yeah. you always have to have that plan B. And I love a plan B. Like I spend as much time with my plan B as I do with my plan A. Because I'm always going to plan B. Okay, so something is always happening. Talk about that. In the proportion of plan A versus plan B in your production schedule, mm-hmm. let's say all through the house, what would you say, and I'm going to start with you, Ashley, because I, I, I wonder if the number is different. How many times do you think, oh, we got to go to plan B? What? Oh, like usually a lot. <laughs> it happened a lot with all through the is house. Is a lot 50%, yeah. 60%? Oh, wow. Definitely over half of it. Over half. Definitely. Well, I would say, yeah, probably. It could be more 50%. Yeah. I mean, the thing, my, my goal is to get plan A. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm right. going to do whatever I can. But if the building burns down, uh-huh. you know, it's like I don't sit there and be like, oh, the building. Bur-. There's no time for no, that. No time. It's plan B. I already got it lined up. Let's right. go now. Yeah. Let's make the most and of it. And I guess it. that's why we don't really notice when plan A doesn't work out because yeah. plan B is already there. It, it's already there and it's already good yeah. and it's thought out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing that allows for the movie to roll on through the production schedule Mm -hmm. but sometimes plan b oh yeah here we go becomes the happy accident right oh oh, man we didn't see that coming and then a fire truck came by yes and we just said point we had a lot of yeah we had that was that that was uh, yeah one moment we didn't we ended up not using that i really really loved it it forced because it forces you to think and it forces you to think fast and make decisions and yeah that becomes that sort of that that moment that you're like wow this is really great yeah so we didn't get to use one of them but it is fun when it happens well this is the difference i think between screenwriting and filmmaking in the between those two processes there is the composition so the screenwriting is like classical music you make the ideal and then the filmmaking process becomes like jazz. jazz. It's like, well, you know what? That didn't go the way we were going to go, so let's go. We have to change the course of this ride now. And it's little things and decisions and stuff that make it so that you go, you know, the difference between the screenplay. That's why it's so much fun to go back to a screenplay after you've seen the movie. Yeah, isn't because it? Because you can go, oh, they didn't plan that. Mm-hmm. And that was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Or here's this thing that they thought they were going to do, and it turns out that the better decision was, you know, whatever. To hold back or to not show it. or Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Ashley, how much leeway do you create for yourself in terms of your performances? If you're going to do, let's say, three or four takes at a crucial scene, right. how different are those three or four takes? Uh-huh. And how much plan B planning do you do? 
Well, for me, there was a lot of plan, not really plan B, but we didn't have a whole lot of rehearsal time with All Through the House. So uh-huh. it was kind of like we did our blocking and then Todd may suggest something and we we roll with it. We yeah. change whatever direction he gives us. We change it and move on. Okay. So it was pretty, pretty quick. So it's great when you go, man, you really nailed that one take. Let's go. Print it and let's we go. We called those the money shots. The money <laughs> shots. <laughs> one take wonders. One but take how wonders. many times do you go? you know what, let's try and catch this like this. And Mm -hmm. how much leeway do you allow yourself in the production schedule for those serendipitous moments? Well, again, that's why I say I always sort of, I'm visualizing everything on a list Uh on what's most important. And if I'm in a scene with someone and it may not be quite what I, what I want, I know that the next scene that we're filming has got like a really major scene or a major character development or you whatever. You have to get that. Yeah, and I have to get that. So I'll make the sacrifice on something like that to make sure that on those money scenes and the money shots yeah. that I have time to work with. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Like I, I stuck an actress in a closet for like two or three hours. Just for fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Was this about – Yeah. <laughs> And uh, uh, but she loved it, and when she came out, she she rocked the scene. I mean, you you see the haunting in her eyes, and and that's what we're really trying to get is for for the actors to believe what they're saying in their eyes more than in their movement or hands. Todd is twisted. Yeah, I sort of want yeah. to walk away from here. <laughs> that that kind of creeps me out well, a lot. Wait until you see Death Wish. <laughs> yeah, you you, you don't want to know you what I told seen her. Anything yet? Yes. So, Plan B is awesome, mm-hmm. but. The universe has a funny sense of humor, mm-hmm. and it's like, hey, fuck plan B. Yeah. What's your plan C? What's your plan F? It definitely has plan Cs, too. Right. Well, plan C is, is usually when you go in on the set, and uh-huh. you're getting ready, and you're, you're doing stuff. You're thinking of other possibilities that possibly you weren't thinking when you were there looking at sure. the paper. Right. Or you were blocking it out in your mind or whatever. So plan C would usually consist of what you have available. If you have a window and you want to just have some light shining through and mm-hmm. uh, silhouetting somebody or, yeah. or closing it and doing the blinds thing or rain coming down or whatever. Things that just happen to already be Yeah, happening. yeah. <laughs> that you can get there to try to just get what you need and, and move on. Like, hey – why don't we just, since this is the last shot of the day, let's let the bear maul Ashley. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, oh, I mean, yeah. those things like that have happened. Oh, like, yeah. there's times where, <laughs> where we were filming um, a, a different movie, um, and I was getting choked, basically, and the actress who was choking me just kept spitting out more and more blood and Todd made me like struggle there I don't know for how <laughs> long and space. the blood was all like dripping and in I, my mouth and it was making me choke and gag and I'm just getting the real gag yeah. and, and I kept filling gross. the actress's mouth up with blood I'm like we need more we need more let's keep going roll roll that went on forever all over yeah. and I literally had to push her off of me too after that so it was um, yeah, it was and she long. ended that up in the hospital disturbing. yeah the doctor was looking at her and feet. real oh, yeah. I was getting um it was still um, in the carol syrup was still in their Combat ears. League, and yeah. the, the doctor checked my ear, and he, like I thought something was wrong with my ear. Until after <laughs> I got back, I was like, "Oh wait, I just did, I just had a bunch of blood like syrup all over." That's great. That's the price you pay. Yeah, that's right. That's the price you sacrificing pay. for art. <laughs> but that too was like jazz. I mean, you're in the moment, and you discover a moment, mm-hmm. and you're there with whatever circumstance that you were dreaming up while you were typing. Mm-hmm. Now is real, mm-hmm. and you see the light, and you see maybe the broken light through the trees or the shadows coming in, and you go, man, I got to capture this. Absolutely. And you capture your actors going, hey, I need to lean over this way a little more because this is darker, and this is spookier, and let's get this. And then, holy shit, that's really working. This lady's killing my sister. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a money shot. Yeah. <laughs> so way to be a, way to be a trooper. Oh, well, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that is one of the great things about Ashley, what she's willing to do for the movie. Yeah. And uh, a lot of actors might be like, eh, she never gives, it's like, oh, if it needs to be done, she's going to do it. That, right. That, that Let's go. We'll go to the hospital is later. Get inside my mouth. Yeah, and I'm we need gag. you to <laughs> jump in that dirty lake of elephant dung. And she's right. like, sure, all down. Okay, you only get one take, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm doing this one time. So. That's not true. You've been training no. her since day one. You're like, yeah. hang out this yeah. window. Yeah. Let's go yeah, again. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah, she My is. earliest memories are five. Yeah. When I was five years old, mm-hmm. I played a lot of. Grab this harpoon. Different parts of these <laughs> yeah. movies. Yeah. Okay, now run. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and we didn't really Shoot use fake with knives, the harpoon. Right. Yeah. We were yeah. 
welding the real knives. I've seen you get stabbed in the face in a performance with yeah, a knife, a I real knife. To, yeah, a real knife. It wasn't <laughs> too sharp, but it was sharp it's, enough. You so, still bled. Yeah, yeah, I bled all over the stage, but, you know, you got to keep Everyone going, thought right? that was great special Sacrificing effects. for the art. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know there was an actual stabbing in Romeo and Juliet. Yes, there was. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing about siblings working together in creative endeavors is you begin to get a shorthand, right? Mm. You know that like, oh, here it comes. Todd's got the here comes the blood <laughs> and it's going to and he's going to keep going and uh he's really getting this shot. I better plan on letting this happen. Mm-hmm. And you understand that that's going to be so you get to be collaborative in a way that two people who are strangers and didn't grow up with each other Mm -hmm. and didn't grow up one torturing the other some would say they don't get to have that language and they don't get to have that simultaneous vision i mean has it been an advantage for you guys oh yeah absolutely it has Mm -hmm. absolutely it has i mean we're still brother sister so we still argue and stuff but when we're on the set we don't really argue so I think that it's pretty much she knows that we're there to do a job. Yeah. That if I'm telling her something to do, it's not because I'm being the older brother who's picking on her. I'm just doing my job. Do you have a job? like yeah. any of the other actors. Right. Except for he knows that he can push me. Right. You know, well, totally. and you've seen the budget for like all the blood, and you're like, oh, I have a big budget for yeah. blood. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to be swallowing blood That's for like days. 10 jars of <laughs> syrup. Yeah. 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 Yes. Oh. Our, our budget was, was almost a as much as it costs to film the movie, uh-huh. just our special effects. Nice. So it's a little gory. Yeah. A little yeah. gory. That's all right. Yeah. So when you are working with Todd versus other directors, mm-hmm. uh, how much more freedom do you think it gives you to say, okay, I can explore this because I know where his buttons are too and I know how much room he's going to give me. Is it more freeing or is it a little constricting knowing, uh, here's my brother and he's going to make me do all this stuff and he knows that I'll sacrifice for the shot Mm -hmm. but i gotta give him what he wants but i actually enjoy that yeah i enjoy doing that because i want the scene to come out as real as possible yeah and as more believable and if other like i may suggest like i'm like i'm ready to go like if you want this to look real i'm i'm like choke me i've had people i'm like choke me harder please like it's okay yeah i mean as long as you know that you're not hurting me right but it's okay to make it look like your hands are choking me yeah not like actually choking yeah me, i but think look she, like you're choking me actually you don't realize you're just going for it in the scene yeah. yeah yeah she realizes what like we had we had one a uh, kill scene from this uh, actress that we were doing and we were putting her through the ringer because you know you have to get it right and you got to be a certain way and there's blood everywhere and it's in her eyes and all that and i told her i said i, I know you want to stop but you're going to be so happy that we kept going when you see your kill scene yeah mm-hmm and so she says, okay, let's keep going. And, and, and so and she did. Mm-hmm. comes out in the and wash. And she did. Yeah, because that, that never goes away. Right. What you're putting on film, that's there forever. So yeah. if mm-hmm. you have the opportunity, I mean, I could Boy, film. Boy, was that what? horribly uncomfortable. And then when the next person yeah. sees it and goes, holy shit, I was so affected by that. And it's yeah. like that was totally And you worth cringe it. Yeah. during that scene, too. And the cringe, cringe. comes through. Mm-hmm. The cringe comes through. Uh, so what are you guys looking at or what are you doing, seeing? How are you entertaining yourselves in a way that's inspiring your your artistic movement right now? What do you do when you get home and you're not watching your own footage? Mm-hmm. What are you looking at right now? Oh. Wow. <laughs> See, I mean, I'm, I watch horror movies. Yeah. So I watch every horror movie mm-hmm. that comes out. I watch all the old ones, the new ones. I like to keep up on that. I mean, this is – it's not just – I mean, it's – it's not like work for me. This is what I do because this is what I love. Yeah. So if I'm working on doing a film, that's for me, that's, that's a vacation. Yeah. Right. You're just doing it. Yeah. But I mean, specifically what right now turns you on? What are you going like, man, I'm really excited about this and it informs my work because it makes me feel like I got to raise the bar or what's inspiring you right now? Uh, inspiring me. Wow. Well, I'm I'm inspired by other people, other indie filmmakers who are yeah, like who? Uh, my good friend Jessica Cameron. Oh yeah, yeah, she's <laughs> awesome. I I've learned a lot from her. She is she's a, a force. No she kidding. is a force. She she's is. got a plan twenty seven F. Like she, she it absolutely does, does. and yeah. she's an incredible person. Yeah, who is not short on information or how sharing. You, yeah, how do you contain that energy? I just I I just suck it all in and listen. Yeah. Yeah. I just get everything I can whenever she talks I'm listening more so than uh, I love that you can look at her and she's telling you what she's about to do or she's telling you what she's in the middle of doing and you're going 
that is absolutely fucking insane. Yeah. <laughs> what on earth are you thinking? And then you go, but yes. she's doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she is. It's mind she blowing is. how much she knows. Yeah. So I'm always there listening. Yeah. So besides Jessica, and we could talk about Jessica too, <laughs> but uh, besides Jessica, what, what else is out there that people should be paying attention to that's good? Because you're watching horror all the time, yeah. but some of it's shitty. Oh, absolutely. You, you know, I have a lot of sim- – like I, I watch – usually watch horror movies with other people, and mm-hmm. other people are a lot more critical of these movies than, than I am. Well, you've been through the process, and exactly. that's what makes the difference. It's like, okay, well, their sound was good, and the footage was in focus, and yeah. you know, third act could have been a little bit more. They could have tightened that up a that, little or, bit. Or they could have had something to say. I think that's one of the things that I – um, I miss most about a lot of these horror movies is that there really is nothing for them to say other than it's a killer killing people. Yeah. And I, I just, I think that when you have that, when you're having people ask a question as they're watching a movie, or analyzing things, or that your mark on this is just a little slightly off than other movies. Yeah. Uh, that makes a huge difference, and I can really appreciate that when I see that. Well, sometimes, like for if you're watching baseball, for instance, just to clarify this for the audience a little bit, you see a guy go up against a, a pitcher. He gets into the batter's box, and maybe he strikes out, but in the course of striking out, he played an incredible chess match with this pitcher. He got 12 pitches out of him. He fouled off stuff. He didn't chase what was out of the strike zone, whatever it was. And it, at the end of it, it was a strikeout, and the pitcher won the battle. But what an epic battle it was, the tiny battles. Mm-hmm. And I think as a filmmaker, correct me if I'm wrong, what you see when you look at a, a horror movie, maybe people can be critical of the movie in general, but yeah. you can look at things within the movie and go, Absolutely. man, they really did that. They really hit that note, or they really tried really hard to do this and it didn't quite come out but man what a thing that completely misses most of the audience yes mm-hmm. yeah. it just finishing a movie yeah finishing it having the credits rolling at the end of the movie i mean it's a huge feat especially for some people there's a lot of things working against you yeah especially if you're filming your movie here right in hollywood there's a lot of things working against you. Absolutely. I mean, we filmed a lot of things in uh, Benicia, good old Benicia, because right. uh, it was so friendly. Right. Nobody cared. The Nobody cops cared. came by and waved and like, hey, what are you, what are you guys doing? Yeah. Exactly. Right. This is really cool. We had family driving by, and too. Like, we're oh, what are you doing? terrified of the police, okay? Yeah. I'm a filmmaker. I'm terrified of the police. So I was like, I, we just stood there with our eyes like deers, and they just said hi and moved on. Yes. Yeah. We filmed a scene one time from my, one of my art classes in uh, college where we went to the library, and you were rolling around on the floor making a racket in the library. Yeah. No one cared. No. You could do that in Benicia. You could, yeah. Yeah. And, and the, during that time. Sure, during that time, yeah. Yeah. You can't do that now. I wielded a gun on Bart one time for a no, movie. No, that's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, it was quick. Yeah. We were able to tell everybody in the car, hey, you guys, we're about to shoot this movie. I'm going to take a gun out. There's only like 11 of us. It's one thirty in the morning. I'm going to take a gun out. It's not a real gun. It's okay. Rockridge. I'm, I'm going to make sure, it, and, and then it's going to be okay. And everybody was like, all right. Except for the one old Chinese lady. Didn't speak any English, and she was sitting back there. I think she might have had a chicken in seat next to her, and she looked at me like, what's going on oh, here? Gosh. And then <laughs> the gun came like out, and the camera was thankfully there, and everybody was like speaking movie language. You oh, know? Speeding, and you oh, know, okay. we're doing the thing, and then it's over, and then we got off at the next stop. And... uh Thankfully, nobody got arrested. If you like the show, and you know you do, send us some pictures of your movies. Don't do that. Support the show. There are three ways you can support us. Number one, go to iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen to podcasts. And leave a five-star rating and review. It helps with the show metrics and helps us get better placement. Number two, visit our website, www.breakitdownshow.com. We've got an Amazon and an eBay link. Same Amazon, same eBay, you know and love, but they give us a little kickback when you get to their site from ours. And number three, leave comments about the shows that you like. We want to know what you think, how you feel. Tell us how to make the show better. We greatly appreciate it. Now back to the show. 
we like boobies. Wow. Whenever we do something that's But you that's can't right. do that here in Los Angeles. No, no. No, you can't. It's, it's very difficult. Yeah. Whenever we do something that might be questionable to the outside, uh-huh. you know, outside of our uh, little production, we usually end it with laughter. Whoops. Lots of laughter. Yeah. Someone's screaming. screaming. Just been tortured. We end it with a laugh. We laugh yeah. and we clap. And clap. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. a crew to go. Good job. Oh, good job. Everybody, everybody does it. It's just the way. Because if you're out in the woods. We're all, yes. we're all okay. Yeah. 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 Screaming in the woods. It, it doesn't look good. Right. No. So. When you did, are you talking about all through the house? You shot any of that in Benicia? Yeah, 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 we did. All right, we did. We shot in Southampton. We shot in American Canyon, which is not Benicia, but we we shot in Southampton. Yeah, mm-hmm. at cool. someone's house there. We got it for free, and you get it for free, right? And you don't have to deal with the film Everyone's commission. You don't have to pay for permits. Yeah, and there. somebody's house gets immortalized in cinema. Yeah, mm-hmm. being siblings, you guys have a family portrait. That is unique. Because Boy, no kidding. I can look at pictures of me with my brother when we were kids, and we laugh about those. But come on, a series of feature motion pictures, <laughs> yeah. a body of work that you can go, hey, remember when we captured Ashley in her 20s? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I mean, one day, God willing, we'll be 85 years old and you'll be showing your. Film to the woods. Great grandkids yeah. and get, get, that's grandma. <laughs> yeah. She's running through grandma. the woods. Grandma used to run. That's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we still have those run. moments from when we were little. Right. We're like, wow, I can't believe that we did that. I yeah. Mean, yeah. We have horror movies from like there are VHS. VHS horror movies. Oh, sure. Like yeah. That. Uh, yeah. The I played big the giant demon cameras. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The big giant cameras. Yeah. They were huge. Just sit on your shoulder. Yeah. You thought you were a real big mm-hmm. filmmaker. Yeah. No way to keep those things steady too. Like if you no, breathe or no. anything, it anything. was like it was just moving all over the place. It was just so heavy. It yeah. just kept moving. That's when Todd did uh, the acting, uh, cinematography, editing, Everything. music. Yeah. <laughs> like it's like you had to tape the trigger on the camera <laughs> the so casting. you could run in front of it and I play your part. He had his actors and then he was crew. Right. Yeah. <laughs> all of it. Yeah. How big your crew now? Uh, well, it depends. We have a bigger crew on this next movie. We did not have a big crew when we did All, all Through the House. house. Yeah. We didn't because we were also going to be traveling. It was so were you directing and shooting the movie? I, was doing, I wasn't shooting the movie, no. We had a cinematographer, okay. Ryan Anderson, who was, did a, an amazing job. But I did do anything and everything else that was necessary. Right. So there was no More job that hats. was too small for me to do. And, yeah, I was doing it. And, and we also had a, um, another person, Glinda Slugs, who um, was also just – Hands on. So with the three of us, the, my cinematographer and the three of us, we did most of the work. Let's talk about the four most crucial crew positions aside from director. Mm-hmm. If you have – you got four people who are – everybody's in where everybody's hats because let's face it. When it, people need M&Ms, people need M&Ms. Yeah. And you're the director and the craft service guy. But if you have to fill four positions where somebody's primary role is going to be this mm-hmm. – what are those four positions? Well, definitely cinematographer, mm-hmm. sound. Okay. And depending on the movie, if you're talking about special effects artists uh-huh. um, for All Through the House, that was a, that was a huge role for us. And uh, also production designer. All right. So what you just described really was everything central to the way the movie looks, the way that we perceive what happens in the action, and the way that we hear it. Mm-hmm. So, what'd you leave out? Like, what role becomes a secondary role where you can go, ah, we don't need a transportation captain, you know, that's like... Yeah, well, I mean, there's like the first AD, and if you go on the bigger ones, you have yeah. first AD, second AD, you know, it goes on and on and on until you have... Script you know, supervisor. Script supervisor. Kind of so, you didn't throw script supervisor in Yeah, there. script supervisor is a good one. Yeah, but number five. Yeah, because, I mean, I, I did it on all through the house, and I'm telling you that it was it's, it's a it's, script it's supervising work. nightmare, mm. uh, considering everything that we had to do and all the cheating out that we had to do. Like, we literally had to make that house that I had written about right. mm-hmm. with a combination of nine other different locations to make it work the way that it, the story was written. And that is just a continuity. Ooh, mm-hmm. yeah, it Gargantuan. is. Gargantuan. Yeah. yeah, and no one's ever caught anything. Yeah, and wow. And when we talk about it, we're like, you know, that was, didn't exist. That was just a, you know, people were like, wow. Nobody's so, caught anything. No one's caught anything. So, like, hey, you walked in the you, room they with will the sandwich now, in your left hand, and then all of a sudden. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> They'll be looking for it down the line. Uh, people always will. No, yeah. um, <laughs> even uh, Lori, uh, Steve's wife, yeah. um, didn't even know some, some of the scenes were even filmed in her own home. Yeah. Well, no kidding. <laughs> That's great. Hey, Lori. You know that's your bedroom, right? Yeah. <laughs> when when the budgets get bigger, there must be jobs that you're like, I do this job because I'm an indie filmmaker and I've got to be lean. But these aren't the ones that necessarily make the movie better, but just it's not a good use of your time when there's more money. You know, what are some of those jobs? Yeah. Well, a lot of those jobs uh, come down to they're not so much uh, my hiring, right? It's uh, our producers. Yeah. Uh, and how much they have to work with, and what they what they want to make sure that's taken care of, what yeah. you know, then that's their their money being invested. Right, they sure. want to make sure that you know I have a, a it first starts AD, with everybody a has to show up at eight o'clock in the morning. Call times at eight. Everybody be there. Whereas on a larger picture, you go okay. Call times at eight. Your guy's picking you up at seven fifteen. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna knock on your hotel room door. And make sure you're out out the door seven fifteen. So be ready, and. If you have uh, if you have a bigger budget and and you get those luxuries, where do you suffer? Well, you suffer. I mean, look, when I did all through the house, I had pretty much control over everything that was going on. Yeah, producers are working; they're busy; they're giving me this opportunity. Mm-hmm. And uh, these are great producers, by the way, Stephen Redman from the Redman Company, Bone Crusher Films. Um, and now that they're like, okay. Todd's making a movie. He can do it. Yeah. <laughs> let's uh, let's we, do this one. We so can the, trust the captain to steer the ship. Yeah, yeah. A lot of control, I guess you could say, yeah. does get taken away. So you have to – got to be good with – you, you can't be a control freak when you're working with a larger budget. And you have to be willing to people. delegate. Yeah. What yeah. are some of the things, though, like Pete was saying, that go out of your hands? Like, Todd, you don't get to do that anymore. Yeah, we, we I Give don't, that I don't, up. Yeah, as a producer, I want you to focus more on the film and less on swinging a hammer doing set design. Yeah, you know, and that's it's funny because it's a real it's hard to make that transition. I'm like, you know, looking up locations and doing all this, and he's like, "Stop! You don't need to do all that. Where we we'll have somebody who right. will come to you and show you these locations, and you can look over them. You don't have to do. That. He's had to stop me. Yeah, more than a couple of times doing things that just I felt that I was used to doing that I have to do. What do you mean we're going to have somebody looking at right. prisons and asylums? You mean I don't have to do that? Yeah. You know, I so. mean, it all started with the one-man crew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's how you have to right. start, right? A, single, a singular vision mm-hmm. from a single person. Now you're, as you get bigger, you have to allow it to be executed on your behalf. And a lot of less stress, too. I mean, It is, but it's almost like, you know, it's like, I want to do it. It's yeah. like, I want to get in there, and I want to I do the legwork. I want to I do all that. But I know that it's going to be better in the end because then I get to focus more mm-hmm. time on, on blocking out my scenes. Yeah. And working with the actors. Mm-hmm. Working with the actor, working with my DP. I right. mean, that's really what, you know, I like to do first. And so... That's you know allowing me more time to do that. You're so spending your good. days getting the right shot, getting absolutely the right, the right shots, the right lens, the right lighting. I want to be really you know I want a lot of atmosphere to come in through this one. We had a lot with all through the house, but we don't have the privilege of having Christmas lights and trees and and all that. So I really want to make sure that we're getting this sort of moody, claustrophobic feel to this one, and that requires a lot of planning and thinking out mm. yeah but suddenly if you have to go okay hold on a second because i gotta restring this thing over here and i gotta have to put this wall back up and if you have to do that then you yeah. have to sacrifice time yeah. from going to the next you know to being on the next scene yeah and working, yeah so uh, ashley is as an actor when you have uh downtime while all the stuff's being set up and you're prepping for your next scene what are you what are you doing mentally to prepare and how are you you know like what are you doing to communicate the next thing or isolate yourself so that you're not distracted by whatever's going on Um, if i'm not already helping out on set because i did help out a lot see here we go (laughs) ashley grab this hammer but but uh, there were there were um moments in the movie where you know todd was like no that you can it's okay for you to go and and prepare and focus for it so um, mostly those ones, I just try to find out my connection with the character to really bring the scene out. Just digging through, like, behind the lines, like, what's underneath, what's being said underneath it. 
Well, how much does the other stuff, though, help you prepare? I mean, how much do you get from, well, I had to set up the, you know, I helped hang the lights and I helped set up the shot. And now I see that there's some, you know, there's some shadows coming over here and I can sort of get a, you know, deeper feel for the spookiness we're trying to create or the claustrophobic feel of the film. Does that inform your performance or would you rather have the luxury of saying, you know what, let me step back and just concentrate on this performance and let everybody build all the stuff around me because I got to do this. I mean, that's always, that's like a dream. That's nice. Like I would love to be able to focus and put 100%, like everything I got, 110% into that. Um, But I also, you know, like what Todd said, when there's a time where you you, uh, have to pick and choose your battles with scenes, so when a scene called for me to, to step away and prepare for it, mentally prepare for it, I, you know, I will do that. But then there's times where you pick and choose. And so there, like if there's like a smaller scene and it's just dialogue and we're setting up, you know, it doesn't really throw me off or take me off. But when you are trying to get to that point, when you're trying to get into your character or whatever it is that you would do, you said, you know, you kind of get behind the lines. I don't know what that means. Help me uh, understand what being that means. What's being said underneath it. Like, there's a story to everything that comes out of our mouths. Can you give us an example of what that um, is? It, a lot of it goes with, you know, acting with your eyes and okay. being said. Like, what is being said is really being said with your eyes and not with the words that are coming out. So it's just trying to find that connection. Do you Are you conscious of more than just your eyes? Like, I know my shoulders need to be rolled a little bit because that creates... You know, this kind of an emotion at all? or No, no. It's not really like acting, like making your eyes make yeah. a certain like yeah. look. It's more like in your brain, in your, your mind. Nice. Okay. And so like whatever's being in your mind should be portraying in with through your eyes. That's the window to your soul. So you have to put your soul in the place. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you could tell when someone's lying by looking at their eyes. And, mm-hmm. and that's what it really comes through. Yeah. In a movie and on film, some of the best actors, they're just, their face is just there and their eyes are telling the whole story. It's believing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, how many times have we watched a movie and gone, oh, that's full of shit? Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it, it does come through and it's not a look or a gesture. It's just, eh, I don't buy it. That's not is it. that ever on purpose? Like, I was watching an episode of CSI. Uh, I was at Gary Cady's house. I'm helping house it with his yeah. house. And. Uh, we are watching CSI, and they just could not stop overacting. You know, it just it's, David Caruso is the king of that crap. Like, yeah. easy, buddy, easy. <laughs> like, it's like he's on the stage, he's acting so big, but he's really on this small screen. Is that ever on purpose? Like, we try to outact something? Is it? Is that a? Well, am I missing it, something? Well, sometimes it can be on purpose. I mean, we're doing it like an '80s inspired horror movie. Sure. Okay, so even though I want everything to be believable and I want to have those moments and stuff like that, I also want it to come across as being fun. Right? Yeah. So and call back to that feeling. And of, call oh, back man. to that feeling. Not to, you know, I, I, none of the, all the actors did a standout job and we, they've won awards and all of that. And I think it's because it, that was also part of the thinking behind developing this movie yeah. and talking with the actors and trying to, to get that fun out of mm-hmm. them. So that people It's can, a theme It's not it's a thing a To try to yeah, do Yeah We wouldn't be acting Like terms of endearment In uh-huh. my movie yeah. It really wouldn't work Right Like that That's cool Yeah I always thought about And you'll know Which movie this is There was a, a movie It was a slasher film Where the guy does A pole vault And he lands And there's spikes In the pad Oh that, What movie was that It was with oh, the, that, those athletes Yeah right, but, Wasn't it with Right the yes Yes Yeah yeah I know this movie well, either uh, way, I always was, was curious as to, like, because I think about logistics. Graduation right? day. Graduation there you, yeah, 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 yeah. Graduation <laughs> day. Todd will pull something out. <laughs> I knew he had it. And I, I saw it at, uh, uh, we rented it at the video store down by Pizza Pirate. That's okay. what I picture in a picture. Yeah, of yeah. Anyhow, so I always wanted someone to tell the story of the serial killer from his logistics point of view. He's like, okay, I've got to hurry up and make the spikes. Uh, they and do the, have a movie like that. Yeah, because that would the drive Black, me crazy. You uh, know? The Black Mask. It's an amazing movie. It's really, really good, I suggest. Right, because the time it, it takes to make that thing, to get to there, to beat everybody back over. I've got to get over to this place. That is exactly the movie. Oh, yeah. that, I've been dying it, to see this movie. Oh, yes. You've got to see it. It's called The Black Mask. It's great. He talks about it. he's going outside, like the windows. And, right. You know, thinking ahead of what somebody might do, and he's explaining it to right. people. So it's really, really 
really interesting. You should see the it. Black right. Mask. The All right, Black cool. Mask. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. You know I love that kind of stuff. It's like, <laughs> oh, you'll how love did, it. You'll how did he think I had to have a gravel truck? How did he, you know? Yeah, yeah. And he talks about the walking yeah. killer and how he kills people while he walks. Right. It's really fun. Right, right, right. Graduation day. Cool. And, and Black yeah. Mask. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Cool. What else should we be watching? Uh, Stranger Things. On Netflix, we just got compared. We uh, a reviewer said that all through the house is probably the movie version of Stranger Things. Nice, wow! Because of the '80s throwbacks and uh, all the nods that we give to. I mean, I can't wait for somebody who's a real big fan of horror movies to go through and sort of pick everything mm. out because there's all kinds of little details from names to colors, right? That uh, represent. Movies. So there's a lot of inside genre. inside content, inside joke kind of stuff. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. filled with it. I mean, that's what the movie is. Right, right. It's a callback. I like it. Right on. Yeah. Now, to the next segment of our show, which we like to call... I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I was all, what is this? <laughs> this is the speed round. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else do you guys want to talk about? Let's talk about Death War 13. Yeah. Ooh, that's yeah. what I'm working on right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. So we got a lot of things planned for it. A lot of differences from the original movie. The original movie was about an insane asylum, but uh, we're kicking it up a notch, and uh, it's going to be in a criminally insane asylum. So the original movie, which mm-hmm. I did not see, yeah. was Don't Look in the Basement. Don't Look in the Basement. And that was about an insane asylum. It sure was. Where in the insane asylum, mm-hmm. there was a warning for us not to look in the basement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like good advice. Yeah. Now yeah. in Death Ward 13, however... Well, in the original Don't Look in the Basement, uh, there really was nothing to do with the basement. The movie had about seven alternative titles that it was released under. And when it landed on Don't Look in the Basement, that was the movie that sparked interest and got people interested. Uh Because it was this, what's in the basement? And you watch the movie and you're like, oh, there's nothing in the basement. Okay. So we definitely, that was something I thought that needed to be answered. And that the basement really did need to be a prominent character subplot of the movie so it plays a bigger part in the reimagining of death war 13 which by the way death war 13 was one of the previous titles of death war number 13 it was number 13 but we took out the number and just yeah death war it's cleaner 13. yeah it is cleaner right so the th- that's great man i love hearing about this because death war 13 is an update that uses one of the original titles mm-hmm. that was ultimately rejected yeah but then it answers more to the title that was ultimately chosen yeah. and really kind of underrepresented in the original yes. film yes. so don't look in the basement that's a neat title and it's catchy and it makes you wonder and it drums up suspense but they really didn't capitalize on it no they didn't it wasn't intended because yeah. the, the title i think it was the last title that they went with and that was the one that took off so they stayed with it and you know it's a great title which isn't to say that they began and then fell short of yeah. dealing with the basement. But you got to deal with the basement. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. So Basements without, are great. Yeah, without giving anything away, you don't want to give away. So what is different about the new film? What's been updated that's... Um, you don't want to look in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah. Let's start you there. You really, really don't. Seriously, don't look in the basement. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, you, know, you got to kick it up a notch. And uh, I like the concept of uh, young nurses... I mean, yes. right? Do you so guys? Do I. Did I get your attention? Yes, <laughs> okay, so the, yeah, that's the point. In the original, there was one young nurse that comes into the. That's not the nearly assignment. enough. No, yeah. it is not. So we thought maybe six. Okay. Okay. So uh, four yeah, main that's ones. A good number. Four yeah. main nurses, and then other nurses that come in. You know and out. those nurse uniforms? Terrible yes. at staying on. Just letting yes. you know. No, it's, they are horrible at staying on, yes. especially the real fitted ones. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. And water getting on them is uh, not a good. Well, it yeah. yeah. depends color. on how you look at it. Right. So, yeah, so I thought... Are well, any of them wearing latex gloves? No latex gloves. No, okay. no Can latex. we wear latex okay. gloves? <laughs> okay, these are... These I'm going to while I watch the movie. <laughs> I'm just so everybody right knows. Now. Anyway. Okay, these are nice nurses. Oh, okay. okay. They're nubile and clean and white. I and let 17 jokes young. go by right yeah. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> just a zillion of them. They're, they're interns to become nurses. I so see. they're new and they're wide-eyed and they're in a really eager. bad situation. They're very eager in yeah. a bad situation. I like yeah. it. So it, it, the movie is a, it takes place. That sounds like all of my fun girlfriends. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I described it to one uh, reviewer who knows Don't Look at the Basement really well. I said, we're going to have more nurses, more maniacs, and more blood. And, uh, yeah, he put out a review the next day. 
<laughs> he yeah. says, "I was sold." Here are the things that <laughs> here are the things that you could improve from the original movie. Yeah. So you're in pre-production now. Yes. When might you start your production schedule? Uh, it's looking more like we'll start at the beginning of the year. I don't want to do anything in December, but I I do want to get it during the time. That Is there I, something strategic about December that? Well, it's Christmas. Yeah. And uh, it's just it's first just of all, you don't want to rush it. I don't want to rush it, and I just don't want anything else bothering me. Yeah. Distractions. You know, having of to Christmas. buy a present or yeah. be happy. You know, I just don't. <laughs> don't want to worry about those. Things. That darn cotton picking happiness. <laughs> so, the beginning of the year, what kind of shooting schedule are you looking at? Well, we're going to film the big portion of our movie. I always sort of block it out in like the main location, and that's where we'll film for about six, seven days straight, which is the as- yeah. asylum. And then we'll schedule all the other scenes that we can shoot out. Like we have an office. Okay, we don't have to pay to have it, you know, in the asylum. We can have an office somewhere else. We could dress that, make it look old and, and grungy and mm-hmm. papers and books and, you know, those pe- those brains and, yeah. you know, the missing pieces and, you know, just do a lot of fun stuff and save a lot of money that way. So you're looking at a six, seven day Intensive shooting yes. schedule in the yes. main location. Yeah. And then the other stuff you'll do sporadically yeah. around that. Yeah. What do you think is the biggest obstacle that a young filmmaker would have in shooting a picture like this where there is a main location like mm-hmm. an asylum? Is it finding the asylum? You know, it's finding the money unless the money is already there. Yeah. Uh, the asylum. It's always finding the money. Finding the it? money and trying to figure out money. how to cheat it and make it work if you are yeah. using another location. Yeah. Because one of the magic things about a director for, especially in the horror genre, especially in the independent horror genre, is that you got to make a $30,000 movie look like a million dollar movie. You mm-hmm. absolutely have to. And you so have you're to. doing everything that you can to compete. With the you're playing in the big leagues with a wiffle ball bat, yeah, and somehow you manage to do that with all through the house. So, with Death Ward thirteen, we can expect more twists. We can expect. Oh, yeah. Is there advantages to having a central location like an asylum where you can say, okay, we're we're in here for seven days, so we can do, you know, is there? St- yeah, absolutely, there is, and uh, and it's good, I, and it's and also because I have a specific vision that I'm really trying to get. Across, I mentioned about claustrophobia, so I want bars on the windows, I want decay, I want water dripping from holes, like the place is crying. I want, you know, and, but you can't, where do you get that? Where do you get everything that you want? So sometimes you have to piece that together. So maybe we film everything inside a prison. Mm-hmm. And the outside of the prison, I get my gothic castle like look out in the woods. Right. And so I can sort of combine those two and, yeah. and try to get what this vision that I have in my head and, and get it out on film. These are the interesting things that people look at. I mean, you know, there's always like the Easter eggs and stuff, and that's yeah. cool. But there are always production things that cinephiles will gravitate toward. Like, man, it did such a great job, even though the interior was a closed down state facility yeah. that used to be a school district building in Burbank. Yeah. And the exterior <laughs> was really like three walls outside of a castle in Ireland or something. Mm-hmm. It's movie magic. Yeah. Yeah. Movie magic. Movie magic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a great castle, the Preston castle in the Bay area. Where is that? I think it's by Napa. You got to look into it. It's a beautiful castle out in the woods looking into it. And so when they, build a castle like this this sounds perfect for a uh, scenario where it's like yeah sure we rent this out as a location and are you guys renting it as a location are you planning on shooting something there uh well it's it's a possibility it's something that i'm looking into and they they do rent it out yeah. really need the outside so we'll see what happens i mean like right now pre-production things change yeah but it's definitely what I'm looking for. For this picture? For this picture. Oh, yes. okay. I want a real gothic feel to it. I want this dirty, dirty atmosphere and these beautiful, angelic nurses coming into this. And uh, I, I like that contrast. Right. Who are really dirty, dirty nurses. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that hey, all depends how you look at don't, it. Don't impede my imagination. <laughs> so, terrific, man. When do you think the movie might come out? Well, I'm hoping that we'll get it out for the festivals 
the by, summer festivals. The, it, October. October. Like October. For like horror movies, year. yeah, it's it's October. Festival season starts in October. Yeah, the, the a lot of the big festivals. I mean, they're they're all year long. Sure. If you want to get like the strategic track yeah. of the big festivals. Yeah, October your is a season great year. kind of starts yeah, great, in October. Great for this month. genre. Yeah. That's cool. Also good to know. Yeah. What are you guys looking forward to in the future after Death War 13? And I know it's such a this is such a this question is sort of like uh, right now you're probably thinking of nothing besides what that's the thing about the film process that's so magical is that it's so consuming. I am thinking totally and obsessed with Death War 13, but I'm always thinking beyond that. I was thinking about Death War 13 while I was doing all through the house. Yeah. And likewise, I'm I'm thinking I've already have you know two other projects. I already I've already got that going. So it's just you 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 have to too. You can't go and do one movie and then all of a sudden be like, oh, so what should I do next? Yeah, you got to roll ahead. Yeah, yeah, because it's always about you know playing around with it in your head for a while, getting used to it, getting comfortable, figuring out the vision, and uh, and how to go about achieving that. Yeah. So it's a process, but well, it's a fun process. You can't think about the ninth inning in the first inning. Yeah. But Setting that aside for a second, what are you guys thinking about looking? I mean, you have to sort of strategically plan your career as a filmmaker because Mm -hmm. you have a finite amount of time, and I know you have things you want to say. And then, Ashley, for you, your time may even be more finite because I will say that you look terrific. You're even more stunning this time than the last oh, time we saw you. Are you in better shape than last you time? You are in better shape oh, than the last time we saw you, you even, right? I appreciate that. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say? Um, You've been training a lot, yeah, it seems I've like. I've been training, trying. I mean, I have a track background or yeah. athletic background, right. so... I'm kind of just getting back into that because that kind of Don't get me wrong. You've never looked shabby. (laughs) No. It it seems like the last few months you've been doing really training a lot. I think I'm preparing for my next role. Uh Uh-huh. It's very demanding, physically demanding. I see. So. (laughs) And and you're also in a competition right now? Oh, I am in a competition right now. Online competition. It's for the Galactic Film Festival. Which is done by. Do you have um, to like jump to the moon? Because you work out hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, no, it's an online competition to see who's uh, going to be this year's Miss Galactic. Um, I'm running up against four other contestants. I'm, I guess I'm currently, as of this morning, in the lead right now. Yes, sweet. So if, yes, we uh, applaud. Uh, the contest, the voting, you can vote once a day uh-huh. um, on as many devices as you would like. Oh, so she's and asking for you to vote for her. <laughs> Everybody vote. Look, I have two devices right here and a laptop. You could go to yeah. um, galacticfilmfest.com. Org, and you can uh, click on their voting for Miss Galactic. Just click on that link, and you will see um, a list of us. Just make sure you click the bubble next to my picture. Nice. Terrific. And, will. Um, there'll be, I believe, an, the contest ends, the voting ends the 29th, and I think they announce the 30th. We'll put a link up so. when we post the show. We'll Wait. put a link up for all, all through, through the, the house. house. Through the house. We'll put a link up for... Is there a better place for you guys to have people buy it? Is it through iTunes is the best? Through Amazon? Um, right now we're pushing iTunes. We'll be on all major video v- on-demand platforms in October 4th. iTunes, we're, we're pushing hard. Uh, Amazon, if you want to get a Blu-ray or a DVD. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll be signing, uh, the cast and crew, signing uh, Blu-rays at Dark Delicacies in Burbank on October 30th. So come on down. Ooh, October PM. 30th. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's going to be a lot we'll of fun. We'll have a lot of cast Dark crew Delicacies. There too. Yeah, it's a great, great store. Great place. Wow. All things horror. That's cool. So, all right. We'll put links up for all that stuff. Also, we'll put your... Twitter handle and we'll put your uh, all that good all stuff. that good stuff. So yeah. if you guys are listening to the show on iTunes or Stitcher or one of your podcast apps, just go to breakitdownshow.com, click on here the latest or episode list or wherever you want to find it and look for uh, or do a site search for Todd and Ashley Nunes. Actually, you know what? They'll also get to hear your previous. Interviews. Uh, interviews. Oh, yeah. We've been here before. Yes. yes. But never together. You guys are like the Wonder Twins right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sometimes More people have magic. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes people ask for us together and sometimes not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, because separately, I mean, if we talk to each of you separately, we're going to talk specifically about the job that you do. But the two of you together have a different dynamic because you're filmmaking partners. 
you come at it from it's not like usually filmmaking partners you have like the Cone brothers or something yeah. who are co-directing mm-hmm. but you have a relationship where you're guiding what's on the screen and performing what's on the screen and that tandem relationship and the fact that you're siblings yeah. brings a whole different dynamic it does and a lot of people have commented on that uh, we've been dubbed the brother sister yeah. duo mm-hmm. and uh, we kind of run with that I mean, you know. Well, you should. Yeah. Definitely, Ashley is, is doing other work, and she's an actress on other projects. But to the moment right now, you are leading by even more, because I just voted for you yes, again. Thank yes, thank you. Thank and you. And I've Sweet. tweeted it out, <laughs> so it's going to happen. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. When does voting end? The voting ends the 29th, September 29th. And oh, okay. I believe the winner is announced the 30th. Nice. The and festival is in November, though, for oh, there that. We go. So there'll be other events and stuff. So whoever wins will be going to different red carpet events and possible role in a movie and you know if some cash smart. is involved. Sweet. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I right. would really appreciate the win. <laughs> Sweet. Well, we'll keep our eyes out for uh, the big release right. of All Through the House, and we'll look forward to this time next year uh, the release of Death War 13. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And we'll look forward to having you guys <laughs> on the show again. Oh, you guys will have to be at the world premiere. Yes. You got it. Yeah. Tuxedo t-shirts. Yes. Yeah. No problem. Walking yes. the red carpet. Yeah. In a tuxedo t-shirt. <laughs> I wore, it's a I'll good wear, time. It's a good yeah, time. I'll wear a tuxedo with yeah. like Angus pants. Something. <laughs> little short chaps. Angus pants. And a, can you do a tuxedo with chaps? You could do anything with Did you say with can you do or have you done? At a horror festival. <laughs> can <laughs> yes and yes but yeah. the good thing about like horror festivals you can pretty much get away wearing you, anything you nice. really can it's that's really my kind fun. of party that's yeah. my kind of party you can never be under or overdressed right that is pete's kind of or party. in costume yeah. yeah before we yeah. wrap things up can we can you talk her into hanging out the window and take some pictures can you hang out the window and take some pictures? Sure. Yes. See? see? Right. That, that is, it's uh, that power of like, let's see how we're going to pull this off. <laughs> it's that she candy actually attitude. attitude. She looked like I'm sacrificing for the part yeah, that yeah. makes a couple, Ashley. A couple of floors. Yeah, she she yeah. analyzed it for a couple seconds. <laughs> and yeah. That's, that was generous of you to say that because she didn't. She was just like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> what is it again? Yeah, I'll do it. Hey, shout out to our studio audience member, Jerry Shaw, who's sitting in with us. Thank you so much Jerry! for coming back, Jerry. Jerry! Oh, no. <laughs> also, I can't say it enough. Uh, we're here for the generosity of Hilliard Guess. Man, we who, yes. uh, the does man. the Screenwriter's Rant Room. And if you guys aren't already listening to the Screenwriter's Rant Room, and if you've listened all through this show and you're that interested in film, there's absolutely much, much more in-depth stuff about writing and culture and cinema and music and everything that uh, so you good. could possibly like in the Screenwriter's Rant Room. So go listen to it. In the Rant that. Room. That's right. And and they keep it real for sure. Ashley, Todd, yes. thank yes. you once again for thank, being thank on the show. You. Oh, thank we you. had a blast. Yes, we appreciate it. Yes. <laughs>